is like you, maker of heaven, Lord of the land, and Lord of the sea, holy and true, faithful and able, Lord of all time and eternity. Hello there friend, every word that God speaks is alive and full of power to inform and transform, to make us what he desires us to be. The entrance of his word will give you light, truth produces roots and then the roots will produce fruits. God bless you. This message was preached by Dr. Ferdinand Mweke, coordinator of Eternity Ministries. We believe you will be edified. For the inquiries, contact Eternity Ministries, P.O. Box 2637, Bauchi, Nigeria, or telephone 0807 570 or 0802 361 5940, or send us an email at eternitymin at yahoo.com. That is eternitymin at yahoo.com. Don't forget, the bigger God gets in your eyes, the tinier your mountains become. sharing into the hand of God. Father, blessed be your name forever. Praise you for who you are. Praise you for the things that you do. Praise you for the privilege to become your children. Praise you for the privilege of your presence. Praise to you alone. All glory, honor, adoration, worship, power, and majesty belongs to you. You are qualified to be glorified. You are worthy. You deserve honor. You deserve the worship of all the peoples of the earth. And we bring our hearts under your rule this morning. And we open our hearts to your word as you speak to us in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you that your word cannot return to you void. Your word will fulfill your purpose in our hearts and in our generation. Thank you, gracious Father. To you and to you alone the praise and glory and honor forever and ever in jesus name we have prayed amen, amen. so our theme for this uh, convention is the sons of god and i want you to write something down just make a note of it somewhere in your notes just write it down it's going to be clearer in the several days uh, that we'll be studying together if your father is the almighty that's what i want you to write down if your father is the almighty at the least you should be mighty if your father is the almighty your father is the almighty at the least you should be mighty if your father is the almighty at the least you should be mighty keep that in one corner of your heart and let us read some texts beginning with genesis chapter 6 and then we will go to romans chapter 8 i believe that what we are dealing with this period is a matter of identity is a matter of identity and i think that it is that identity that will define the manifestations that will take place you see when you are not settled about your identity who you are and what you carry 
and what you are connected to and what you represent. Manifestation is a mirage. Manifestation is not possible where there is questionable identity. You remember the sons of Skiva? Do you remember them? They were sons. We will be seen in a while that there are all kinds of sons in scripture. In studying and preparing to come here, I was amazed to find the different types of sons that you have in scripture. The sons of Skiva, seven of them, their father was a Jewish high priest. And they came to this demon-possessed man and they said to the demon-possessed man, in the name of Jesus Christ, whom Paul preaches, come out. And the demon-possessed man, you don't know that devils know their rights. You are the one that doesn't know your rights. Devils know their rights. So the devil demanded to see his certificate of identification. He said, can you identify yourselves, please? I know who Jesus Christ is. If he was the one telling me to come out, there will be no discussion. And I know who Paul is. We have clashed several times. <laughs> and we know what he did to us. But who are you? They couldn't answer the question. And when they couldn't answer that question, the tables were turned against them. The demon spirit pounced on seven of them and, you know, beat them thoroughly and drove them away from the house naked and tattered. When God said to Moses to go and meet Pharaoh and say to Pharaoh, let my people go, there's a question that Moses asked God that is important that you keep in your mind. Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh with this message that you are bringing? Who am I? Remember, that was a question that drove Moses away from Egypt. Remember when he was going to separate the people that we are fighting? Do you recall that story now? The man, the oppressor, the other man asked him a question. He said, who appointed you a ruler and a judge over us? Who appointed you as a ruler and a judge over us? Where did you get the authority to put your mouth and to intervene in this matter? So Moses could not answer that question. And when Moses could not answer that simple, clear question, he ran away. He ran away. So when God was now telling Moses to go back and go and meet Pharaoh and ask Pharaoh to let the children of Israel go, are you following? He was now saying to God, when I get to Pharaoh, you see, there were, two, <laughs> there were two things that Moses was asking about. First of all, he said, who am I? that I should go to Pharaoh and say what you are saying. You see, God was commanding a manifestation, but Moses was dealing with identity. Because he knew that where identity is not settled, manifestation is a mirage. Manifestation will not work where identity is not settled. And when I say settled, I don't mean settled by bold face. I mean settled in reality. It's not guesswork. Identity is not a question of guesswork. Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and I should bring out the children of Israel out of Egypt? God said, I will be with you. So Moses now asks the second question. When I get to Pharaoh and I tell him that <laughs> the God of the Hebrews have sent me to come and tell you to let the people go. And Pharaoh asks me, what is his name? <laughs> Moses said to God, what will I tell you? You may think that Moses was just being difficult. He was not being difficult. That's the way we should pray. 
Moses knew that you don't go to Pharaoh empty handed. You don't go to Pharaoh empty handed. So he had to find the answer to those two questions before he went to Pharaoh. And the rest is history. I believe that the matter of identity is at the heart of this focus that God has given to us for these several days. The sons of God. So let us read first of all in Genesis chapter 6. In Genesis chapter 6, you have something that is very important in study. I'm not a theologian, you know, by... Uh, I think I'm a practical theologian if I, if I can borrow from prof. But I'm not a, a theologian from the, uh, by, by gown, you know, by academic qualification. But there is something that theologians call the law of first mention. And the law of first mention talks about the first time something is mentioned in scripture. And it's a very important principle for understanding the Bible. When you want to understand God's word, ask yourself, where was this matter mentioned the first time? When you understand that, it will give you a good idea of what that thing is about in the rest of scripture. There are several things you can do that for. You can do it with marriage. If you want to understand marriage, ask yourself, where was marriage first mentioned in scripture? This automatically will take you back to Genesis chapter 2, and then you can now trace it in the rest of scripture. So where was the term, the sons of God, where was it mentioned first? Genesis chapter 6, and we are reading from verse 1. Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, that daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men that they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose and the Lord said my spirit shall not strive with man forever for he is indeed flesh yet his days shall be 120 years look at verse 4 that's where we are going to stop it says, there were giants on the earth in those days. And also afterwards, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. And then of course, the Lord now saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Now the question of who are these sons of God that are mentioned in this passage has occupied theologians. Some people have said that they are angels. Some people have tried to describe them in diverse ways. But from my own little study, the idea that they are angels is not properly supported by several principles in scripture. The first one is Jesus said angels cannot marry. Remember that Jesus said that. And uh, he, he didn't differentiate between, you know, angels of God and, uh, and fallen angels. He simply said, they are like the angels. They do not marry. Secondly, we do not know from scripture that angels have the bodily requirement for marriage. Are you following that? And then thirdly, you will notice that those, uh, those that marriage produced children. Are you following that? It produced children. It didn't produce spirits. It produced human children. And the God had commanded that all kinds must reproduce after their kind. Do you remember that? So the summary, the consensus among many Bible scholars is that the sons of God, there were two lines of descendants in the in the book of Genesis. You have the ungodly line represented by Cain and then you had the righteous godly line represented by Seth. So many Bible scholars believe that it was a mixed marriage between the line of Seth and the line of Cain. Are you following that? The people that were righteous and working with God, they were referred to as the sons of God and then these other daughters of men 
that they saw that they were beautiful they were wicked people from the line of Cain now this is not my focus but I decided to provide this background for you so that you can have understanding like I said I intend to be detailed I intend to be detailed you can do some further studies on that by yourself but I want you to begin to see an important indication of something about the sons of God from verse 4 look at verse 4 notice that when the sons of God whoever they were and whatever <laughs> whatever they were when they got married please note very cl closely here the product of their marriage was not ordinary that's what I want you to note I just wanted you to see that point what, what did they produce the Bible says when they had children these children were giants they were giants in the land and he said these children they were mighty men of old and they were men of renown so automatically you see that there is a certain potential to produce something mighty something of renown you know residents in the sons of God when the sons of God marry their children are not ordinary children because they must produce after their kind you begin to see that indication and I want you to keep that in mind because that is a fundamental principle in our study blessed be the name of Jesus Christ okay so the sons of God will not produce something that is uh, usual and something that is split level because they are not now imagine what would have happened if sons of God married daughters of God I don't know if you are following that now notice that by marrying daughters of men look at what we are told happened so what could have happened if the sons of God married the daughters of God obviously the seed the consequence of that relationship will be on a different level but just by marrying the daughters of men, you are talking about giants. You are talking about mighty men of renown. Men of old that were great upon the earth. Of course, the earth got corrupted. Are you following that? And the wickedness of man was great upon the earth. That's not the focus of our study at this time. I just wanted to point that scripture out to you. So we can now leave Genesis and go to um, Romans chapter 8. So let's turn our Bibles and uh, read in Romans chapter 8. Ideally, I would have liked to read the entire Romans chapter 8 because it's, it's all part of the context, the wider context that you need to understand what we are studying um, in detail. But let's see uh, some of the scriptures that we can read from Romans chapter 8. So we are in verse 1. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. For what the law could not do, uh, in that it was weak through the flesh, what has happened? God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit. For those, please, I want you to notice flesh and spirit. Flesh and spirit. The reason is because there are children of the flesh and there are children of the spirit. And by the time you get to verse 14, which is the exact uh, verse from which our theme is taken from, you begin to see further into that direction. Are, are you following now? So it says, for those, verse 5, who live according to the flesh, there is a reason they live according to the flesh. Eh? And that reason we are going to see is because they are children of the flesh. 
So what do they do? They set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, they set their minds on the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God. The carnal mind, this man of the flesh, is not subject to the law of God. He cannot be led by the spirit. You see, it says, for as many as are led by the spirit, they are what? They are the sons of God. You know, I'm reading it from here so that you can actually see the big picture. This thing is not just, the scripture didn't start from verse 14. He said, for, you don't, you don't begin a story with because. If you look at verse 14, verse 14 says, for, for as many, because as many, you don't start a story with because. So it means that there is some pretext that tells you where this story is coming from. Does this make some sense now? So it says, the carnal mind is enmity against God. Don't forget that the mark of the sons of God is that they are led by the Spirit of God. But the Bible is now telling us here that there is a carnal mind that is present in the children of the flesh, which is enmity against God, and which cannot be subject to the law of God. And in fact, the latter part there says, neither indeed can it be subject. It's not possible. It will not. It cannot be led by the Spirit. So, the Bible now says in verse 8, so then, those who are in the flesh, they cannot please God. They cannot be led by the Spirit. They cannot please God. Verse 9, but you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If if indeed, if indeed, the Spirit of God, does what dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, what did the Bible say there now? He does not belong to Jesus Christ. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you are not of Christ. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life or alive because of righteousness verse 11 but if the spirit of him who raised jesus from the dead does what dwells in you what's going to happen now then he who raised christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you in other words that spirit will do in you what he did in Christ. <laughs> I said the spirit, because he's the same spirit. So he says, if the spirit, we will come to that. I pray that God will, will, will provide. Because I want us to really study. If we do not enter into a settled revelation of our identity, this manifestation we are talking about will just be a story. It will be a slogan. And I don't like slogans. I don't, slogans sound like politicians. And you see the way they switch parties. I hear that in Bayelsa State, even the chairman of the, of the ruling party, the one that just left some months ago, the chairman of a party, along with plenty others, they have gone to another party. But they were shouting slogan. They carried umbrella. Now they are taking brooms. It's a slogan. They didn't have any identity. It's one of the problems with politics in Nigeria. The politicians don't have any convictions. It's a marriage of convenience. So if this is, somebody called it Ajib, any government in power. If this is, yeah, I don't mean the oil company, by the way, I mean Puerto Rico. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I'm talking about an acronym. So for some people, they keep shifting. If this is where they are going to get something, they move. If this is where they are going to get something, they move. Don't, they don't have identity. They don't have, they are like chameleons. They take the color of the environment. If 
the manifestation that God is speaking to us about is going to happen. Something will have to happen in our hearts that makes our identity as the sons of God a settled, tangible reality. It will not just be ordinary verses that we read in scripture. It will become the experience of our lives. As we are walking, it's something we know. It's something we, that is it's not guesswork. I, you know, as I read the Bible, I see things in scripture that, that, that amaze me. And one such person is Brother Paul. I read the Bible, Brother Paul said, uh, I know that I'm longing to come to see all of you so that I can impart some spiritual gifts to you. But the man is carrying something. This man is loaded. He said, look, I want to see you so that when I arrive, I can do what? I can impart some of what I am carrying into you so that you can be strengthened. You can be established in your faith. Then all of us will now be mutually encouraged by the faith of each other. In another scripture, you know what Paul said? He told them, he said, I know that when I come to you, I will come with the fullness of the blessings of the gospel of Christ. I know. This is not a prayer point. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The man didn't say, when I come, we will pray and then we will see what God will do. That is not what he said. He said, I know that when I come to you, I will come. How am I going to come? I will be carrying the fullness of all the complete gamut of blessings that are located inside the gospel of Christ. I will come with it when I'm coming. The blessing of forgiveness, the blessing of healing, the blessing of deliverance, the blessing of power, the blessing of the manifestations of the Spirit of God, the blessing of fellowship, the blessing of revelation. I know that when I come, when I come, somebody say, when I come. <laughs> you know, can, you, you know, you, I don't know if you are, you see this, we are, we are promising too much and delivering too little. Let's face the fact. We are promising too much and delivering too little. But Apostle says, I know him whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. You see, these people are not guessing. This thing is not, this manifestation that we are talking about is not going to happen with people that are guessing. Jesus is not a story. He's a person. Yes, sir. This is the reality. It's not going to be so okay. Well, it's going to be by faith, though. But it's there is there is faith is not some uh, faith is tangible. Oh. Faith is not so is not mental asset. I agree with my head. No, that's not faith. I want you to be praying for yourself that there will be a revelation of your identity in God this weekend. And it will not be a story. It will be settled inside your heart as it is settled in heaven. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. But if the spirit of him, we are reading in verse 11, who raised up Jesus from the dead dwells inside you. He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies. How? Through his spirit who dwells in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, but not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, what will happen to you? He said you will die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, he says you will live. Why? Why? Can we all read verse 14 together? I want to go. Verse 
one more time for as many as are led by the spirit of god they are what they are the sons of god now look at verse 15 it says for you have not received the spirit of what of bondage again to fear but which spirit have you received now but you receive the spirit of sonship the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out what do we cry out abba abba father it is it is the most tender form of the name father it's like papa papa abba daddy daddy The Spirit himself does what? Bears witness with our spirit that we are what? We are the children of God. We are the sons of God. And if children, if, if it is true that we are actually children, then what did he say there now? Then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If indeed we suffer with him that we may also be glorified together for i consider i reckon that the sufferings of this present time they are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us hallelujah for the endless expectation of the creation eagerly waits what are they waiting for for the revealing the manifestation the revealing of the sons of god and you know this manifestation this revealing is not when we get to heaven huh because the sons of god that we revealed are not in heaven notice that the sons of god is talking about here now not the ones that are in heaven and the creation is talking about now is not the new creation that is to come he said the earnest expectation the the word there from my little study is eager expectation in fact one of my bible version says that the creation is waiting on tiptoe tiptoe that is the picture of the expectation there it's an eager expectation waiting for when will these sons of god be revealed when will these sons of god be made manifest when will what is buried inside them come out when will the life of God that is flowing in his sons release us from our bondage? Creation is waiting. They are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God because the creation was subjected to futility, vanity, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of god hallelujah if you jump down to verse 22 he said for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now not only that but we also who have the first fruits or the earnest of the spirit even we ourselves we groan within ourselves eagerly waiting for the adoption the redemption of our bodies so you see there is also a component there is also a manifestation that is going to require the redemption of our bodies when corruption we put on incorruption are you following that component so but those manifestations will they are too pronged you have a present manifestation and you have a final manifestation that happens when our bodies are redeemed finally look at verse 26 likewise the spirit also does what helps in our weaknesses notice spirit you notice you know why i'm reading this i want you to see the picture making the connection because this spirit something didn't start in verse 14 it didn't end in verse 14 there's something prof said yesterday i hope you heard it very well <laughs> he said he takes a spirit to overcome another spirit oh yes that is the truth actually life is a battle of spirits it has to do with which spirit is living inside you 
Which spirit are you carrying? That is what determines your situation in life. Let me give you a quick example, but I, I pray that we will have time to study it maybe tomorrow or next. Do you remember the story when Brother Paul was in Philippi? He was in Philippi with Brother Silas. And there was this slave girl. Uh, this is Acts chapter 16. Can you uh, put it up on the, sc- on the screen for me? Acts chapter 16. Um, when Brother Paul was going to the place of prayer. And that girl was following them. Huh? Yes, it's from verse 16. Acts 16 from verse 16. Aha, good. Now it happened as we went to prayer. That what happened? No, I need your participation now. What happened? A certain slave girl who was what? Everybody say possessed. Possessed. One more time, possessed. Possessed. See, it's not wrong to be possessed. The trouble with being possessed is with spirit. In fact, I'm going to show you from the Bible that every human being on planet Earth is possessed. Everybody is possessed. (laughs) I have come to understand that everybody is possessed. Of course you are carrying something. And that thing you are carrying is what is carrying you. So this slave girl was possessed with a spirit. Notice she's a slave. But she's not the only slave. Brother Paul himself was also a slave. Who was also possessed? You see, it's a story of two slaves representing two kingdoms. Possessed by two spirits. <laughs> May God bring a revelation of your identity in Christ. Listen, if this thing does not listen, if this does not settle in our spirits, we will be talking slogan. And I don't like slogan. Don't call me if you are discussing slogan. A certain slave girl possessed with what? A spirit. Spirit. Spirit of what? Of divination. The word there is python. That's the literal. It's a spirit of python. It's a snake spirit. Python. That was the spirit that was living inside this girl. But if you saw her, she's walking along the road. She looked normal. But there was something inside when you see a child of God walking down the road, he looks very normal to you, but there is something inside. You know, this is not a joke. This is not a story. Please listen. I did not leave medical practice to come and be telling stories. There is something we are not. This is not a story. Jesus is not a story. He's a person. There is reality. Listen, the, the trouble with us in the church is we are, we are telling stories. Too many of us who are preaching, we are not even preaching scripture. We are just telling, we are just telling stories. We are just rambling. And our stories cannot help anybody. But the word of God that became flesh and dwelt among us. He said we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten Son of God. Fool. 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 I like the word. Fool of grace and truth. Fool. Loaded. He was a son. And he was full of something. He said, We beheld his glory. Glory as of the only begotten Son. There is a glory that begotten Son is coming. And they are full of something. Full of grace and truth. For the law was given through Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And out of his fullness. All of us have received. 
grace upon grace upon grace upon grace an endless cycle of grace coming out of the fullness resident in a song and is the firstborn among many brethren this girl was possessed so was brother Paul and now look what happened at that. Look what happened. He said she brought her masters. So you see, the girl has masters, but Paul also has a master. Everybody has a master. You know, when some people think that they are the ones making their own decisions, I laugh. When I look at the Western world, I say, "Look, liberty. We must be free. We must be free." You don't understand that that your freedom is a kind of slavery to a certain master. But the master will not allow you to know that he's your master. So he makes you to think that you are the one thinking what he is making you to think. <laughs> Everybody has a master. The slave girl had a master. Now notice what he said. She brought her masters a lot of profit. <laughs> How did she produce the profit for her master? Because of the spirit that was inside her, enabling her to fortune tell. So Paul also had a master and he was bringing profit to his master. How was he bringing profit to his master? Because of the spirit that was living inside him. There is no profit apart from the spirit. For the manifestations of the spirit are given to every man to do what? To profit with her. There is no profit apart from spirit. There is a spirit in man. I thought age should speak and multitude of years should teach wisdom. He said, but now I know that there's a spirit in man and the inspiration of the almighty gives them discernment there's a spirit inside man there's a spirit there's a spirit inside man there's a spirit in man until the spirit is poured upon us from on high then the wilderness shall become a fruitful field and the fruitful field shall become a forest righteousness shall dwell in the fruitful field and the effect of righteousness shall be peace and quietness and assurance forever it's not by power and it's not by might but by my spirit says the lord she brought her masters much profit by fortune telling yes so this girl followed paul and us and cried and said, these men are the servants of who the most high keep that in your heart because these sons of god they are the children of the highest they are the children of the highest now you see, you, you, the highest cannot have children who are the lowest. You, you, you cannot have the most time having children who are the most low. <laughs> no. No. These are servants of the most high God who proclaim to us. You see, you see, even this python is <laughs> including himself or herself in the way of salvation. Notice that what the spirit, what the girl was saying was correct. But then the question is which spirit? <laughs> see, it's not in preacher, it's not enough that you are preaching a correct sermon. The question is which spirit? There are many powerful sermons that you are preaching, but there is a spirit of covetousness behind the sermon. All this, your sweat and your power, you are preparing people for the offering. You are preparing them for the offering. You are getting them ready. You are get, for when you will put in your sickle and gather your harvest. You are preaching powerfully, but with, with spirit. Which spirit, which spirit is speaking through you? What are you looking for? Why don't 
you stand in front of the church and tell say, brethren, September is coming. My children are going back to school. I don't have school fees. Please, I will be grateful for all of you that we help so that pastor's children will not be driven away from school because of money. May God bless you. Please, if you want to help, see me at the end of church service. People like me will give you money. I will, I will look for money because you are an honest man. But this one that is preaching powerfully with an agenda in his heart. Which spirit is speaking through you? Who commanded you to say this thing that you are saying? Where did you get this message from? From that spirit. What she was saying was correct. And Paul, <laughs> you know, she continued to do this for many, many, many days. And then Paul was greatly annoyed. He was, he was just provoking his spirit and he thought. Now, you know, listen, one of the manifestations of songs is that songs have discernment. See, if Brother Paul didn't discern this spirit, Brother Paul would have carried that girl and joined her to the crusade team. And when he wants to preach, he said, Sister Linda, come and testify. Tell them, tell them. Look, all of you, all of you people in Philippi, look at your own daughter here telling you the same thing. Tell them, have we seen you before? She said, no, but I know that these are servants of the most high God, the richer of the way of salvation. <laughs> Probably she would have been the girl that will make Paul to commit immorality. Because that spirit of Python will have entered into the circle of the brethren. There are Jezebels inside church. And if you, if you, listen, Jezebel is more dangerous than Ahab. Somebody said, why did Elijah, why did Elijah run away from Jezebel? You don't know, run from Jezebel no. Even when Jehu was going to handle Jezebel, he didn't look at her. When he looked up, he saw her, he said, who is on my side? Who? And some new knocks. He said, throw her down, throw her down. Because Bible says, Jezebel painted her face. She arranged herself. They throw her down. Jezebel is mentioned in the New Testament in the book of Revelation. Uh -huh. But Ahab is not. Stay away from Jezebel. I'm preaching, I'm preaching, I'm preaching, God. And if Jezebel has cornered you already, listen. If you, there is a Jezebel somewhere inside your heart, somewhere inside your life, that has that has that that you you, you opened your heart and this Jezebel has crept inside. Please be aware that that is not the nature and the spirit of Christ. Paul turned around and said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. Notice that Paul didn't, he didn't, there's, a, there's one of our brothers back on campus, when he wants to cast out a demon, say in the name of Jesus, in the name, he will roll up his hands like that, so, say in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. You know the kind of drama that we do these days in the name of prayer and in the name of ministry. What did Paul say? He said to her, he said, he said, he didn't shout, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, come out of her. Full stop. Did you see the full stop at the end of the statement there? Fire! 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 From your head to your toe. Fire! Fire! Liquid fire! Liquid fire! 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 fire, 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 fire. You don't read this here in the Bible. Do you see the full stop? Do you see the full stop? Do you see the full stop? Look at the full stop. Who taught you? Who taught you this thing you are doing? Where did you learn this thing from? Where did you learn this thing from? And he came out. Now look at the next verse. He said, "Yo, get yapa." Look at verse nineteen. He said, "But when her masters saw that their hope 
of profit was gone. Now wait, pause. What was it that went out of the girl? It was a spirit. But when her master saw her, they knew that now that the spirit is gone, their hope of profit is gone. When the spirit is gone, the hope of profit is gone. No wonder the Bible says, do not quench the spirit. Because when you quench the spirit, you have just quenched your hope of profit. The, the girl came. You know, how did the masters find out? In the evening, the girl came to do a consultation. So she sat down. There was one man that came. He has paid advance deposit. So that as soon as he gets his fortune told, then he will go out and pay the balance. So the girl sat where she used to sit. And she did. You know the way she normally stands up? I don't know how she does it. She, she provoked. She stared up. You know, don't know that. Even the other people who are possessed, they have to stir up the spirit that is inside them. You know what the Bible says? I put you in remembrance to stir up the gift of God that is inside you. And spirits can stay somewhere and stay quiet. So the guy sat down there and the master said, Oh, yeah, now talk. He said, There's nothing, no. Okay, there's nothing. He said, what do you mean there is nothing? Come on, the man has paid. The girl said, there is nothing. No. Ah, where did you go to today? I, I, I went out of town. Did anybody talk to you? She said, yes. What is the man saying? Say, I don't know, but it was very short. It was very short. You know, Paul means little. Paul means little, smally. Smally, that's the middle. You know, when you hear Paul, you think he was a giant. Like, no, 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 no. He was, he was a nickname. Him and Barabbas, they went to preach, and then the way Paul was talking, they say, hey, Smally, this Smally can talk. Oh, Smally, Smally, see, Smally, Smally. That's how Paul swallowed his name, Saul. Uh, come now, he entered into a basket. Don't you understand what I'm talking about? You know, you remember the man of God inside a basket like that. <laughs> so you know, that, that is. If it's our president that you're trying to put inside a basket, you'll be a problem. <laughs> so, so, Paul was. So the guy said, You want one small like this? <laughs> they say, Where? They say, It's somewhere outside there. So the masters came and they, they grabbed Paul. They say, That thing that you cast out of her, cast it in. <laughs> But Paul said, no, we don't cast, we don't cast in devils, we cast out devils. It's okay. So now that you are not casting it in, we are going to cast you into prison. That's how he ended up in the prison in Philippi. There was a spirit inside the girl that was making her profitable for her masters. And there's a spirit inside Brother Paul that made him profitable for his master. And when spirit clashed with spirit, <laughs> when spirit clashed with spirit, the spirit of the Most High prevailed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, that the Holy Ghost will come afresh upon his church. Oh, that there will be a fresh, genuine move. When I say genuine, I mean genuine. Not these spurious, spurious claims that we have. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, the Bible said, suddenly there came a sound. From where? From heaven. From heaven. From heaven. It was not an environmental sound. A sound from heaven. Father, let the sound from heaven come again upon your church. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. A genuine sound, a moving of the spirit in the life of God's children. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Okay? So, I've just been reading our text. So, let's do some basic introductions now. Now, 
I need to point out that when he, when he says the sons of God, sons of God is actually the same thing as children. There are two words. Like I said, again, I'm not a, a professional theologian. And I didn't study Greek or Hebrew. But you know these uh, Bible study softwares, they can help you these days. I saw there are two words that are generally translated child, children, sons. And the one that talks about the sons of God is basically the same word for children. Huios is the word for children. And is what is used of Jesus. The son of God, son of man, uh, son of David. That son there is, is the same word that was used for the Lord Jesus Christ. And <laughs> what I found as I studied scripture is that there are all kinds of sons in scripture. All kinds of sons. And all of these sons are known by their, by their fruit, by their manifestation, by their origin, by their source. And what I found is that children and offspring, they bear the nature uh, and the characteristics of their father. Uh, so, and they bear the characteristic of the kind from which they are. True or false? So human beings give birth to human beings. Lions, what do they give birth to? They give birth to lions. Please, keep this in mind because one of the things that I think has cheated the church and I don't have time to address this. I don't know when we'll have time to study the marketplace so that you actually understand the platform that God has given to us. But let me just say quickly here that if it is true that lions give birth to lions eh? and that Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah then I don't understand who divided lions into full time lions and part time lions excuse me have you seen a part time lion before I don't know who divided church into full time and part time because you will not find that division in the Bible. Was Paul part time or full time? Are you sure? But he was working, he was a builder. He was building tents. Now, now, when you read tents in the Bible, it's not mosquito net. Oh. These tents, we are, in fact, some, some Bible commentators say it's carpentry. They were structures. People lived inside, people stayed inside those tents. He had a trade. So was he full time or part time? Uh -huh. So how come that people like uh, our president, people will call him part time because he has a job. Now, by the way, who divided a Christian's life into spiritual and secular? You see, there are, there are paradigms, there are assumptions that we have in the body of Christ which are not rooted in scripture. And which has paralyzed the people of God. Do you know that as soon as you say to yourself, I'm not a full time minister, then all the responsibilities of full time people, you are excused from it. So you don't have to study your Bible and pray like the full time preacher because you are part time. Which verse are you quoting? Which verse are you quoting? Oh, that God will raise the day. When every time you meet a Christian, it will be like meeting a lion. You see, if all of us are from descended from the lion of the tribe of Judah, every one of us has lion characteristics. And it cannot be diminished. Does it mean that we will not have leaders? Of course we have leaders. In a tribe of lions, there are leaders. But every one of them is a lion. In fact, sometimes it is not the leader that hunts. It is the ones behind. When they are finished hunting and killing the, the game, you know, they pray. Then the leader will come and sit down and eat first. But if you met any lion, you will know you met a lion. 
let me leave that matter because I don't, I don't want to be diverted. But the point I'm trying to make here is that now, when giants gave birth, what did they produce? They produced giants. In 2 Samuel chapter 20, the Bible talks about giants. Ish bibenob. Ish bibenob. These are, these are giants and children of giants. Philistines. If Goliath was to have a child, what kind of child? Baby, do you think Goliath will give birth? <laughs> you produce a giant. I hope he finds a giant wife to marry to. The point is that every species does what? Reproduces after its kind. And now we are going to now look at certain kinds of songs that we find in scripture before we draw to a close for this morning session. But please, note that each of these sonship relationships that we are going to look at, they have consequences. Whether they concern the children of God and the sons of God, or whether they concern the sons of other things that I'm going to mention. Let me give you an example. As children of God, we are children of the highest. Shall we? I mentioned that earlier. Now, children of the highest will have the qualities of the highest they, they cannot be low because there is no low gene inside them but friend are you saying that all of them are going to have billions of naira in their bank account no 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 that is not the kingdom yardstick for measuring sonship that's not the ruler they used to check for sons but the point is since their father is the most high they are also seated with him where in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In other words, the assumption of the Most High has consequences. We are going to look at that in detail because that will help us to establish our identity in Christ. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. If we are children of God, then the divine seed abides in us. If we are children of light, then we cannot be darkness. We cannot walk in darkness. But before we focus on our identity, let us look at all kinds of sons and children that we find in scripture. Number one, the Bible talks about the children of men. The sons of men. Huh? In Psalm 145 verse 12, he said, to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts. The sons of men. To make known the mighty acts of God. You remember Psalm 107? Oh, that men will praise the Lord. Oh, that men will praise the Lord. For his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men to children of men for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men to the children of men he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder the children of men the children of men so if they are children of men they will behave like men are you following that now? The next one I want to mention is a group of people the Bible calls the children of this world. Please, let's go to Luke chapter 16 and verse 8. You can make note of the reference and our brother will just project it for us on the board. The children of this world. Now, look at that scripture. And the Lord commended the unjust reward because he had done wisely. For who now? I need you to help me follow that scripture. For who? The children of this world. The children, the sons of this world. It's the same word, huios. The sons of this world. I know that there's a difference between a child and a son. I'm going to come to that. That difference is maturity, is growth. Huh? We are going to deal with that. But for now, just understand that when he says children, he's talking about sons. But children is uh, maybe a better translation because sons sounds pretty exclusive. So when sisters hear sons, something might say, 
we are not part of that. Uh -uh, uh -uh. As far as God is concerned, sons of God includes the females. By the way, there, there are no female spirits. <laughs> there is no male spirit and there is no female spirit. There is no male spirit and there is no female spirit. You know some brothers oppress their wives. They say, look, you are the weaker vessel. The Bible says, you are the weaker vessel. <laughs> I normally give an example. If two people scored, one person scored 28% in mathematics and the other person scored 27% in mathematics, who is the weaker person now in mathematics? The person that scored 27 but both of them are weak. You are not getting the point. You see, when you are talking of, of weak and weaker and weakest, you are not talking about strength. What are you talking about? You are talking about weakness. So weaker is a comparative term of weakness. It's not indicative of strength. So it means that both the man and the woman are weak. Both of them now need to depend on what? On the grace of God. Full stop. And by the way, nobody tells us the degree of the weakness. 27.999992 is weaker than 28.000001. But you, you, you are not told that it's an infinitesimal fraction between the two of them. Let him that boasts, let him boast in the Lord. Not in the fact that you are a man. There are women that are more important than ten sons. You read the Bible. You, you read the Bible. They say, your daughter-in-law rules. Your daughter-in-law rules. She is worth more to you than how many sons? Than ten sons. Tell her, listen. God says the Holy Ghost. Women are coming in this generation that will carry the light and the power of the Almighty God. They will bear the life of the Almighty and they will reveal Jehovah in their generation. In the name of Jesus Christ. God told me, he said, women are coming. Women are coming. <laughs> now, notice what he says. Ah, the children of this world. The children of this world. Ah, now notice that there's another kind of children that is, is mentioned there. What, who, which, who, who are these? He said, the children of this world are in their generation. What? Wiser than the children of light. So you have two categories of children. There are only two categories of children on planet Earth. There is no third possibility. The children of this world. Who are the children of this world? Because they are children of this world, what will you expect in their life? You will expect them to think like this world. You will expect them to see from this world's point of view. You will expect them to behave like this world. You will expect their portion to be in this world. In fact, the Bible says they have their portion in this life. Because they are children of this world, they will be masters in the ways of the world. In their decision making, they will not see beyond this world. This world is the limit of their horizon. They cannot see beyond time into eternity. When they are making decisions and they are making choices, all that they think about is this world. When they are looking at success, they measure it with the ruler, with the yardstick of this world. They compare themselves with themselves and they are not wise. Their portion is in this life. This world is all they see and is all they live for. Why? Because they are children of this world. Now, but look at what Jesus said. This is not the focus of the study this morning, but I need to point it out to you. There is a book I just put out with the CDs. It's called Marketplace Ministry. And I deal with this in detail there. Because it's important for manifestation in the marketplace. Now, look what he says. The children of, of this world are in their generation. What? 
wiser than the children of light now who are the children of light the children of light are the sons of god they are the sons of light but let's leave that pending because we are going to come and concentrate on that later now but look what he says he says they are wiser in their generation now let me tell you what shocked me recently with that scripture i used to think that the children of this world have their own generation are you following that now where they are wiser but listen to what i came to understand recently the children of this world and the children of light they are living in the same generation because excuse me please in planet x today is the only children one set of children you have one side for children of darkness and you have another ch- side for children of light is that the way the earth is the only the, the children of this world and the children of light go to the same schools they go to the same market they spend the same currency they travel in the same place they drive on the same roads listen pay attention now pay, pay attention listen they live on the same planet they are contemporary they are living at the same time now here is the trouble what do you think is going to happen if they are living in the same place doing business in the same environment and the children of this world are wiser what do you think is going to happen the children of this world will outsmart the children of light and that is what is happening to the church is it supposed to be like that no 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 that is how can children of this world who the bible actually called the children of darkness how can they be wiser than the children of light but the word they are for wiser the word is phronimos it means shrewd shrewd smart sagacious the children of this world they are shrewd and you know what jesus said concerning tell and listen to what jesus said jesus said i am sending you out into the midst of this world as sheep we are in the midst of wolves that's how the sons of god are in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you shine as light holding for the word of life so the children of God, they are like sheep in the midst of wolves. Now, you will agree with me that sheep in the midst of wolves is deadly. Because wolves, what do they do to sheep? They eat sheep. Now Jesus said, I am the one that is sending you. So here is the question. How will sheep fulfill their assignment? in the midst of wolves without getting eaten somebody say by the grace of god yes it's by the grace of god but jesus told us how you know what jesus said he said since i am sending you out like sheep in the midst of wolves be ye therefore 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 for that reason be ye therefore what as wise as and as innocent as dogs here is the question how do you do the two at the same time that is what a child of god needs i see that for many children of light they are very innocent but they are very blank in their head they are not shrewd they are not shrewd you are very innocent so you're doing business you won't sign any paper you won't get a lawyer you won't do proper business you are, you are not shrewd you are not smart can you imagine jesus telling us to be as wise as what can for jesus to say that what we make him to say that because he knows that if all you know on planet earth is that you are innocent and you are not smart you are not shrewd I don't mean worldly wisdom. I can give you examples. I don't have time to study it. If you look at Brother Paul, hey, 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 oh, Brother Paul, I like this. I like, I like, I like Brother Paul. 
I like Brother Paul. Let me, let me give you an example. You see that Philippi story I told you? Remember now, the Philippi story we just finished with. Uh-huh. You know, he ended up in prison. And they beat him and Silas thoroughly. Scattered their backs. After the earthquake, the following morning, they came and said, uh, allow those men to go. Brother Paul said, for where? I mean, we are Roman citizens. And they beat us publicly without trial. Listen now, listen to listen, listen to the shrewd that the man is both church wise and street wise. He is not just a fellow who his head is buried inside Bible. He also knows what is going on in society. He knows the law. He said, You beat us publicly, Roman citizens uncondemned and now you are telling us to go away quietly no you must come yourself and come out the bible said when those people heard that paul and co they were roman citizens what did the bible say happened now they were terrified they came and they were begging they were begging they said please sorry no please just be going because they knew that they were in trouble move down to acts for that chapter 20 21 22 they caught brother paul and they tied him and they were about to start flogging him but I pause and wait excuse me please is it correct for you to tie up a Roman citizen and you are arranging to flog him when he has not been tried in a competent court of law he said is it legal for you to tie the bible said when the people that we are going to tie him and start beating him heard he was a Roman citizen everybody stayed away from him but Abba said, good, this Roman citizen something is working. <laughs> this Roman, so he knew his rights as a citizen of heaven and he knew his rights as a citizen of Rome. Notice that he, what do you think would have happened in Philippi if he told them he was a Roman citizen? He would not have needed an earthquake to bring him out of prison. Then he asked the man. The man said, are you a Roman citizen? He said, yes. How did you become a Roman citizen? I was born a Roman citizen. The man said, I bought my own. He said, are you sure your certificate is correct? <laughs> uh, we are the properly born Roman citizens. You, are, you bought your own. And you are trying to beat me here. Notice that Brother Paul didn't say, is it scriptural? What did he say to the man? Is it lawful? Is it legal? In other words, there are some people that you don't quote Bible for. Because they don't know your Bible. So you have to have something else to quote. It's a picture of being shrewd. I'll give you another example and then I'll leave that matter. Brother Paul was on trial one day. And he noticed that on this side, you have the sad, you see, then on this side you have the, the people that are far you know, the Pharisees you know and he was watching them and of course Paul knew their theological differences he knew what Pharisees believed and he knew what Sadducees believed you know the Sadducees say there is no resurrection there is no spirit there is nothing the Pharisees believe in spirits revelation and all kinds of things so in the middle of the trial the Bible says Paul was watching them. He raised and said, Excuse me, I'm a Pharisee. I'm a Pharisee. I'm the son of a Pharisee. It's because of the hope of Israel. I believe that there will be a resurrection of the dead. That's why they are tying me here. That's why they put me in this place. The Bible says, When Brother Paul said that, the place exploded. The Pharisees came against the Sadducees. Brother <laughs> Paul was watching the drama. <laughs> They had that. What if a spirit spoke to him? The Sadducee said, No, there's no spirit. And they, they were going to tear Brother Paul to two, where they are fighting over him. The Pharisees began to defend him, and the commander took Paul back inside. In the night, Jesus came to Paul and said, He's a Good boy. <laughs> you have been a correct witness here. You have been correct here. As you have testified of me here, you are, you are getting to Rome also. Give Jesus a clap of it. You understand what I'm talking about? 
The children of this world will not be wiser than the children of light. I said the children of this world will not be wiser than the children of light. Because if they are wiser in this generation, there will be consequences. Now, quickly, I want you to see next that we, there are people the Bible called the children of the flesh. You read that in Romans chapter 9 and verse 8. It said, that is those who are the children of the flesh. Huh? I want to see where I can tie this up together. You have the children of the flesh. Huh? Those who are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But who are the children of God? But the children of the promise are counted as the seed. Now notice here, you have children of the flesh, you have children of the promise. And it is the children of the promise that are children of God. In our next session, we look at what does that mean? That sons of God are sons of promise. But these children of the flesh, what will you expect from them? You will expect them to walk in the flesh. You will expect them to behave in the flesh. Why? Because they are children of the flesh. Their mind is set on the flesh. And the Bible says, now let's go to Galatians chapter 5. And please put up verse 19. Now, please look, help me to look at the board. What does it say about the flesh now? Now, the works of the flesh, they are what? They are evident. That means when you see these works present, you don't need to, one person said they are manifest. They are clear. When you see these works manifesting, it is not the spirit of God that is in operation. It is the flesh. And anybody in whom you see these works manifesting, if that person tells you that he's a son of God and he's a child of the spirit of God, there is, that, there is a big question mark to that claim. So what are these works of the flesh? He say number one, adultery. You say, if there is a man or a woman that is sleeping with a man or a woman that is not his wife that he married, that person is committing adultery, he is a child of the flesh. Actually, the word adultery there is sexual immorality. It's an umbrella term for all kinds of sexual immorality. Fornication. Fornication. Sleeping with people that you are not married to, two or married people. In fact, fornication in general, sexual immorality. Do you have sexual immorality present somewhere inside your heart, in your life? If there is, now who is telling a lie now? Is it the Bible that says that those that do this kind of thing, they are of the flesh? Or you that you are claiming that you are a man of God when this thing is present in your life? He said uncleanness lasciviousness this means everything that is not clean pornography is included in that list there if inside your phone and inside that ipad that you are holding there are naked men and naked women committing immorality and you are watching it you have this stupid useless nigerian music that people are playing and these women are shaking their bum bum in front of you and you are watching it in the night when nobody is around with your phone that you have locked with a password. It's inside your iPad. The Bible says, this is the work of the flesh. And it is manifest. Now, if the works of the flesh are present in a man's life, is the person a child of the spirit? The Bible is very clear. He said, do not be deceived. He said, anybody that is living like this has no inheritance in the kingdom of God and of Christ. There are men that are watching pornography. He's on the phone. He's in the iPad. He's in the laptop. Even in the office, you are watching it when nobody is around, using the network in the place where you are working. And you speak in tongues. Now there's a problem now because a child of the flesh is now speaking in the tongues. There is confusion. You see, there is confusion in the church because we don't have a real experience of who Jesus Christ is. There is a mixture of light and darkness. 
people are claiming something they are not that is why there is no manifestation lasciviousness uncleanness please put the next one idolatry sorcery hatred 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 so can you imagine somebody sitting inside this place there is somebody you hate inside your heart he took my church members he took my church members did you die on Calvary? How did you have members? <laughs> you took your members. Whoa, where, where, where did you get the members from? You shed your blood for the lamb, for the, for the, for the, for the flock? You don't even know that maybe the person, the, the people they took are goats. Why don't you relax so that you can pass on the sheep that are remaining? Oh, yes. But since that thing happened, you are bitter, you are angry in your heart. He took my members. He took my members. He took my money. He took my money. Hatred, jealousy, outburst of wrath. There are men that are seated quietly now. But when their wife talks to them, particularly when there is no money in their pocket, yeah, there is an unholy earthquake inside their house. come from it came from the spirit that is inside selfish ambition what are you doing in the ministry what are you looking for even this business that we are listen listen men of praise listen listen may god deliver us from covetous people that have their own agenda because in this fellowship Especially with all these business investments. Once you have covetous people, men and women of the flesh, who have no interest other than the kingdom of God, and they have their personal ambitions, they want to use this thing to make money. They have heard that these people are involved in this, and now they have come to join. Once those kind of people are multiplied, this vision has a problem. What are you looking for? What is inside your heart? dissensions heresy heresy look at the quantity of heresy we are preaching on the pulpit because we are looking for money we are gathering members we can't tell them the truth if you tell them the truth they will run away you say my church is the fastest growing church in town by which register is it the one you keep here or the one they keep in heaven heresy scriptures I went to preach somewhere when I finished preaching they called somebody to collect offering he said brethren do you know that story of Daniel in the lion's den they said yes he said today I'm going to tell you what it means so I was listening so I can be blessed he said you know when they threw Daniel into that lion's den all the baby lions wanted to rush they were very hungry they wanted to rush at Daniel but then the mother lion called all the baby lions and said, wait, 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 wait. He said, if you eat this Daniel, you will eat only Daniel. But let us use Daniel to sow seed. So that there can be a harvest. Listen to what we are preaching on the pulpit. So there can be a harvest. And then the man said, you remember that when they took Daniel out, that all those that plotted against Daniel, they were thrown into the dead. They said, yeah, he said, that was the harvest, that was the harvest. That was the harvest that they got, that they got. Now, don't forget, he's not done yet. The man has not finished. He said, now, now, that your only Daniel. That Daniel in your pocket, that Daniel in your purse. If you eat that Daniel, if you eat that Daniel, there will be no harvest. Bring out that Daniel, bring out that Daniel. Bring out that Daniel. Bring out that Daniel. Which Daniel? Which Daniel are you talking about? Heresy. You will see the plain statement of scripture. You are twisting the thing. What? So that you can collect offering. I'm saying it. I'm saying it. Heresies. Put the next one, sir. Envy. His church is bigger than my own church. His business, he has more than me. Look at his car. Look at my car. See his wife. See my wife. 
How can he be the one that got that husband? Look at me when I'm more pretty than her. After all, I've been holier. I've been keeping myself. And look at, since me that was keeping myself, it is the ones that we are sleeping around. Now they're all married. And it's me that is still here. Murders, drunkenness, and all the rest, he said, of which I have told you, I have told you before. I told you, many of us that are preaching, we have never told our people that those who are living like this will not make heaven. He said, I've told you before and I'm telling you again that those that live like this, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. They are not children of the kingdom. They are not children of God. All over the scriptures, you hear the Bible talk about the children of the kingdom and the children of the wicked one. Please, go to, go to 1 John chapter 3 verse 10. I want to draw to a close and stop. We'll find a place to pray. There are all kinds of children, strange children. David prayed to God. He said, oh God, deliver me from the hands of strange children. St there are children, oh, but their lifestyle is strange. Excuse me, was Absalom not a son of David? He was a child of the house. But he was a strange son. Where did he get this rebellion? Who taught Absalom? Do you know that up to that point in the land of Israel, there had never been a coup? I said there had never been a coup. Remember, Saul was the first king, followed by David. There was no coup. Nobody ever thought that somebody could rise up against a sitting monarch and remove him. But it was a child that came out of the bowels of David that hatched the plan. A strange child. He claimed he was a member of the family. And he was doing good with an agenda. I want to ask you, man of God, what is going on inside your heart? He was a strange child. Very strange. Strange behavior. The Bible talks of the sons of Eli. He said that we are sons of Belial, sons of Belial. They we are worthless. They we are worthless children. Can you imagine that we are sleeping with the women? That, can you imagine women that are coming to do sacrifice and walk in the temple? They are sleeping with them in the temple. There are preachers that are sleeping with their church members. You say, talk to them. I'm talking to you. <laughs> Search your own heart. There are, there are people that are stealing money. There are people that are seated here now. You borrowed money from people, you refuse to pay them back. You are a child of the wicked. Uh -huh. The Bible says, the wicked borrows and he does not pay back again. You need to convince me from scripture that you will borrow money from people for three, four, five, five years. You refuse to pay them, you refuse to answer their call. And you are a son of God. And you are a child of light. You need to show me what you are saying in the Bible. Listen, if something does not happen in our hearts that makes us to encounter Christ in a genuine, transformative manner, we should forget manifestation. Darkness cannot conquer darkness. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. I said, blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. But blessed be God. The other, you have the other kind of the devil has children. Who, look at it. He said, In this, the children of God and the children of the devil. You know, when you say that devil has children, it sounds unthinkable, but it is true. Look at how do we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are? He said, Anybody who does not practice righteousness is not of God. And he who does not love his brother. But you know the good news? The good news is that Jesus left heaven and came and died. So that all of us, children of the devil, children of darkness, are cursed children with the curse of God upon our head. All of us can get the opportunity to be born again. To receive another life. To receive the life of God himself. But if that is going to happen to us, 
we will have to be honest with God. We will have to be honest with God. We will have to say to God, Oh God of my salvation, I can see the works of the flesh in my life. Do something for me before I perish. Change my heart. Give me the heart of the spirit. Hey, the Bible says, those that have that heart of the flesh, that mind of the flesh, they are filled with the flesh and the things of the flesh. But those that are born of the spirit, they walk in the spirit. And they are not debtors to the flesh to fulfill the loss of the flesh. As we go to God in prayer, we have come to a moment of reality. Some years ago, God said something to me. Let me say this before we pray. <laughs> and that thing, that thing rings in my ear. The Lord said to me, he said, I want you to be perfect. The Bible says, be ye perfect. Even as your heavenly father is what? Is perfect. So I want you to be perfect. Then he said, but why you are not yet perfect? I want you to be honest. Why you are not yet perfect? I want you to be what? I want you to be honest with me. Then he said, if you are not perfect, but you are honest, he said, I will help you. And then the last component of this understanding, it, 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 my brother, the thing, the thing rings in my head. He said, but if you are neither perfect, nor honest, he said, there is no hope for you. As we go to God in prayer, if you are not perfect, it's not, it's not too much of a problem with God. But when you now join it with hypocrisy, and they make a call, for people that need God to intervene in their life, to prepare them for the manifestation of the sons of God. And you sit down there with immorality in your heart, with secret sin buried somewhere, with hatred and envy, with covetousness, with the lust of the flesh inside your heart, with strange things around your life. You sit in the place and you are doing chakara, ba -ba 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 -ba, ta -ta 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 -ta, waiting for them to finish the prayer. There is no hope for you. But those that will respond to God, and we come to God and say, Oh God, make me a true son in the house. Ah, you know what the Bible said? He said, A slave does not abide in the house forever. Say, But the son abides. If the son of God therefore shall set you free, what did he say now? You will be free indeed. Somebody is going to say to God, Oh God, I'm not interested in stories and theories and claims. I want to be free indeed. Let us pray. Let's respond to God now. That is all that is left for honest people to rise up and say to God, I hear the voice of your spirit calling. I hear the voice of your spirit calling. I hear the voice of the spirit calling forth the true sons of God. Preparing his people for manifestation. Oh, I hear the voice of the spirit stirring up the hearts of genuine sons to return to the father the prodigal son was a son Teleco. the prodigal son was a son but he was away from the house the prodigal son he was a son but he was away from the father he was with pigs in a far country squandering his resources with halos oh god let there be a return today let there be a return I want us to pray to God, everybody. Let's lift up our voices. Let's respond to God. Let's respond to God. And let's be honest with God. And let's say to God, thank you. Thank you that you are bringing this understanding. Thank you, oh God, that there is mercy in the house. Thank you that you have not come to condemn me, but you have come to help my life. I want to know you. I want to experience you. Jesus, don't pass me by. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. No. Yeah, my humble cry. And while 
on others thou art calling. Savior, do not pass me by. Pass me not, pass me not, pass me not, O oh, gentle Savior. Oh, yeah, I hear my humble cry. And why on others thou art called? Savior, do not pass me by. Put the next verse, jump the chorus. Next verse. Let me at thy throne of mercy. Father, find a sweet relief. Everybody lift up your hands as we're saying. Trusting only in thy merit. In your merit. Oh, I seek your face. Heal my wounded, broken spirit. again. You can start responding to God even while we are singing. Everybody trusting only. Trusting only in thy bed. Trusting only in your merit. For now would I seek thy faith. Heal me. Heal my wound. Trusting only in your mighty Jesus, would I seek thy face? Heal my wounded, broken spirit, Savior, save me by thy. Next verse, please. Now, next verse. Thou, the spring of all my God, I'm for Savior, do come on. 
Let's sing the chorus now. Oh, my blessed Savior, 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 yeah. My humble, yeah, my humble cry. If you do not pass me by, what's two, please? What's two? What's two now? Let me at your throne of mercy. Whoa, Lord, let me find sweet relief. Let me find sweet deliverance. Hallelujah. I'm kneeling here in deep contrition. Savior, help my unbelief. Oh, my blessed Savior. Oh, Savior, don't pass us by today. Don't pass us by. As you are calling forth your songs, as you are calling forth your songs, don't pass me by. Yeah, my humble cry. While on others thou art calling, the Savior, do not pass me by. Verse 3, please, verse 3. Come on now. Trust. Everybody, let's sing verse 3. Trusting only in your merit, Jesus. See the old I seek thy face. Heal my wounded, broken spirit. Many of us, we are wounded. We are wounded. We are broken. Lord, heal my wounded, broken spirit. Save me by thy grace. Jesus, heal my wounded, broken spirit. Jesus, heal my wounded, broken spirit. Save me by your grace. The Bible says it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. He say, heal my wounded, broken spirit. Prodigal sons are coming home. The Spirit of God is healing wounded, broken spirits. It's time to repent now. Wherever you are and you want to respond to this call, just step out of your seat and begin to call upon the Lord. Everybody let us pray now. Let's say, Lord, have mercy upon my heart. I want to be a child of your spirit. A child of your spirit. I've lived as a child of the flesh. Ah, Father. Father, by your spirit, give me new life today. Cleanse my heart, wash me. Transform me inside. Put a spirit inside me. Ah, that prevails. A spirit that does not owe the flesh. He says, so then brethren, we are debtors, but not to the flesh. Because there's a spirit that is inside us. Ask for that spirit. Say, thou spirit of the living God possess me afresh chase away the flesh and the works of the flesh cleanse my heart, restore my soul heal my wounded, broken spirit save me by thy grace thank you father I want you to begin to thank him begin to thank him begin to plead his mercy plead his blood it's a new day. It's a new day. As many as received him, he gave them power, power. Receive power now. Power to become. Power to overcome. Power to become the sons of God. 
power. Power is flowing from his throne into your heart. Power. The power to profit. The power that transforms. The power that breaks the yoke of sin and the chains of darkness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Let's pray together. Something is going on inside your heart. Power is flowing into your inner man. You will never remain the same. Because you opened your heart to his word. He said the word came, but the people, his own people rejected it. Say, but as many as opened their heart to this word of life, he gave them power. Receive power to become right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every chain that holds you back is broken by the spirit. Broken by the spirit of liberty. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus now sets you free. From the law of sin and death. In the name of Jesus Christ. Satan, I break your power over this heart. Over this life. Every strange habit. Every strange lifestyle. Every strange behavior. I break your power in the name of Jesus. Who the Son of God sets free. Is free indeed. Now the Son of God sets you free. Receive this liberty. Enter into the glorious liberty. Of the sons of God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, I ask that your spirit, the omnipotent, almighty spirit of the almighty God, will settle in this house and begin to manifest the characteristics of this new nature. The life of God. I said the life of God begins to flow now, begins to bubble up, begins to manifest in every department of your life, in your mortal body, in your spirit, in your mind in your choices, in your family, Amen. in your business Amen. and in all that concerns you Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. from now on, as children of the highest, you are seated with him in heavenly places Amen. take your place in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. thank you heavenly father in righteousness you shall be established Amen. and you shall be far from oppression Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ Amen. thank you heavenly father Right now, I seal you with the blood of the Lamb of God. Yes. You belong to God. Yes. You are God's property. Yes. You are God's heritage. Yes. Satan, it is written. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Thank you, Heavenly Father. The seal of the Spirit seals your spirit now. Yes. And the Spirit himself is bearing witness with your spirit. Come on now, there's a witness in your spirit now. Come on, there's a hallelujah, praise God. There's a witness in your spirit that you're a child of God. That you are born of God, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed.